Lisa brought me a bag today. Let's see what's in there. Do you want to see what's in there? What is it? Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's to go. It's um, a knife, a fork, a spoon, a napkin. We got some salt and pepper. We got everything we need to have a meal. Well, which we're not having today. We're having donuts. So in our reading for today, it said that if our enemies are hungry, we are to feed them. Do you want to feed your enemy? No? Do you want to feed your enemy? No? Uh, it's hard to feed our enemies because we don't necessarily like them because they've been mean to us, right? So I often say in youth ministry that you don't have to like everybody, but you do have to love everybody. Because if we were hungry, would we want our enemies to feed us? Yes. If you were hungry enough, I would think you would eat any food that people would give you. What if you had your enemies? Even your enemies. Well, let's hope they did not spit in it. That would be bad. But that's the whole idea. We've been talking about treating others the way we want to be treated. And if we are hungry and we want food and our enemies offer us food, we would want that because we're hungry. So it's the same thing. If we see our enemies who are hungry, we should feed them too. I know it's hard. I get it. We're going to talk about it more in the sermon. I bet you would give your enemy a piece of your snack. That's because Sage is sweet and practically perfect in every way. All right, should we pray? Holy God, you tell us that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves and that we are to treat others the way we want to be treated. But that gets really, really difficult to do when it comes to our enemies. God, help us to treat our enemies the way we want to be treated while we stand up and speak out when our enemies do things that are unjust, mean, and not good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So did you pay attention to the reading from Romans today? Because it was pretty brutal. The reading from Romans starts out pretty, pretty normal. But we get that. Love genuinely. Love uh, without uh, pretensions. Uh, so like without gain, without wanting anything in return. Love genuinely. And then it, it keeps going on and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's all good. Until we get to verse 14. Verse 14 says, bless those who persecute you and do not curse them. Never avenge yourself. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. And I, if you notice the youth's faces, it was perfect. Because we all have enemies. We all have people that have been mean to us, that have bullied us, that we would think of as an enemy. And then we think about not avenging ourselves when they do something mean. We think about um, not cursing people who are mean to us, our enemies, and to fill their needs. When they're hungry, give them something to eat. When they're thirsty, give them something to drink. It's not easy. But we've been talking the last three weeks about treating others the way we want to be treated. And like we said in the youth chat, if we're hungry and our enemies give us something to eat that they didn't spit in, but they give us something to eat, we want that. We're hungry. If we're thirsty and our enemy gives us something to drink, that's how we want to be treated. So it's important for us as we think about how to treat others the way we want to be treated, to include in that our enemies. Because today, Jesus gives us the greatest commandment, to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And our neighbor includes our enemies. So in the scripture, in the gospel reading today, Jesus is talking to a bunch of Jewish leaders. 
And these Jewish leaders are getting frustrated with him because he's calling out their leadership. And he's calling out how they are leading the people of, uh, of God incorrectly. So they get frustrated with him and they decide they're going to test Jesus. And they say, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And what's awesome is Jesus answers correctly because he's brilliant. So for our Jewish brothers and sisters and for us, the greatest commandment is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And that says that we are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And Jesus adds in our reading today, with all your mind. So pretty much what both Jesus and the writer of Deuteronomy are saying is love God with everything you are. But the cool thing about Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 is that if we would read right before that in verse 5, we would find Moses and the Ten Commandments. We would find the story of Moses going up onto Mount Sinai um, and then grabbing the Ten Commandments and coming back down. So what Jesus is doing by quoting Deuteronomy 6.4 is not only telling all of us the, the greatest commandment, he's also bonding that second commandment with that story of Moses and the Ten Commandments. So Jesus says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two greatest commandments because if we follow them, Jesus says, we are going to keep the law and keep the teachings of all of the prophets. So the entire Hebrew scripture, all those laws, all of those commandments that God's given, all of that can be summed up in two commandments. Love God, love your neighbor. So if we look at the Ten Commandments, it's true. The first four commandments are uh, all about God. So the first three commandments are all about God. So if we love God, we're not going to have idols, we're not going to take God's name in vain, and we're going to remember the Sabbath day. So check. And then the last seven commandments are about loving our neighbor. So if we just love God with everything we are, and if we just love our neighbor, we are going to keep all of God's commandments. Simple. Love God, love others. Simple. Love God, love your enemy. Not so simple. Because we don't want to love our enemies. We want to get revenge. We want to be avenged. Uh, 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 what's the word? Avenged. Thank you. Because I went into my next one. We want avengers. It's not a coincidence, those of you who love whatever it is, Marvel, DC, I don't know. But they're called the Avengers because they avenge those who are being oppressed by the enemy. And I could go on and on and on about all the enemies, right? But we want to be avenged. We want revenge. We want our enemies to get what they deserve. And that is not our love. So when we think about our enemies getting what they deserve, the, the first thing that came into my mind was karma. And a lot of us believe in karma. And that idea comes from, it's, it's a religious idea, especially uh, we hear it in the Hindu faith, uh, it's in the Buddhist faith, it's in the Taoist faith. There's a lot of faith traditions that believe in karma. And it's the idea that whatever you do, whatever you put out there, you're going to receive. So if you do good things, you get good things. If you're a good person, you get good things. If you're a bad person and do bad things, then you get bad things. So whatever you put out into the world is then what you will receive. So it's this idea of the, the scale, right? So God puts all of all your good things on one side of the scale. And God puts all of your bad things on the other side of the scale. And then when it comes to what happens after we die, whichever scale is the heaviest, 
is what happens to you, heaven or hell. So throughout our life, it's blessings and curses. And then once we die, it's what's going to happen to you. That's the whole idea of karma. When we think about our enemies, karma seems like a really good thing. Because our enemies are going to get what they deserve. But the thing is, my friends, and I thought about having you raise your hand, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> but think about, have you ever been the enemy? It's easy to think karma when we're thinking about our enemies. But now let's flip it. What happens when we're the enemy? That's when we cry out to God for mercy. Now, did you listen? <laughs> a lot about listening today. Did you listen to the confession? The first thing we said in our confession today was, have mercy on us. And I said, um, there was another one of mercy, but I missed it. So we, all, we say in our confession, God have mercy on us. Because we're the enemy. We're the ones that fell short. We're the ones that didn't honor our neighbors. We're the ones that didn't love our neighbors. We're the ones that drove them crazy. And we're asking for mercy. And then later on in the service, we're going to pray the prayers of intercession. And we're going to pray for other people. And we're going to say... God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We're all about mercy when we're the enemy. But when it's somebody else, we want to believe in karma. That they're going to get what they deserve. So we have Wednesday Bible study online. And I would invite all of you to come online, whether you're online or in person. Um, we have an online-only Bible study on Wednesdays. And Ken has invited his granddaughters. And this week, Caroline came for the first time, thank God. Because she said, you know, our, our enemies really do get what they deserve. And it's God's mercy. Our enemies really get what they deserve. And it's God's love. Because we have a tendency to think based on our needs, which is for our enemies to get bad things. But really, when it comes to God, because we believe in a merciful God, because we believe in a forgiving God, because we believe in a forgiving God, karma does not exist. As followers of Jesus Christ, who strive to do all of those difficult things in our Roman re Romans reading, we cannot believe in karma. Because if we believed in karma, we could not believe in a merciful God. We could not believe in a forgiving God. We could not believe in a loving God. And if we read scripture over and over and over and over, Hebrew and Christian scriptures, we hear of a God that doesn't give us what we deserve. God gives us grace. God gives us mercy. God gives us forgiveness. And that is what we are to give our enemies. But as we said two weeks ago, uh, that does not mean that we allow our enemies to abuse us. That does not mean that we allow our enemies to uh, be mean to us, to take advantage of us. No, no, no. Remember two weeks ago we talked about um, turning the other cheek. And how when somebody hits you, Jesus is not saying to let them hit you back. That's insane. What Jesus is saying is that we are to turn the other cheek to make it impossible for that person to hit us without losing reputation. Without looking bad. So what Jesus is telling us to do is when we see injustice, when we see people being mean, when we see bullying, when we see oppression, when we see people treating each other poorly, we are to stand up, speak out, and be moved to action with love, compassion, humility, and love. 
that doesn't mean letting people abuse us. That doesn't mean standing by because we're afraid that whatever we do is not going to be loving. It means that we stand up, we speak out, we try and change systems that are oppressive. But we don't do it by fighting evil with evil. We do it by fighting evil with love. And by doing that, hopefully, we can bring about change. By doing that, maybe we can show other people how to do it. Instead of getting angry, instead of calling for Avengers, instead of seeking revenge, maybe we can change and help other people to see how to react to injustice with love, compassion, and uh, humility. And Maybe we can even change the hearts of our enemies so then they are no longer enemies but are, at the very least, acquaintances. Perhaps by following the two commandments that God has given us, to love God and to love others, we are able to change the world to teach the world how to react to meanness, oppression, injustice, not out of evil, but out of love. And we can bring about the dream that God has for the world, which is our Advent theme. Uh, next week is the first Sunday of Advent. So we take four weeks before Christmas to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus, and that's what Advent is. And our Advent theme this year is about dreaming. We're going to ask ourselves, what was God's dream for the world when God brought Jesus into our midst, when Emmanuel started to dwell with us? What was God's dream? And we'll try and figure that out through different characters in that Advent story, like Elizabeth and Zechariah, Mary, the mother of Jesus, different characters. Uh, so we'll, we'll discover God's dream for the world in the Advent story, and we'll ask ourselves, what is God's dream for the world today? We discovered that a part of God's dream for the world today is that we don't fight evil with evil. We don't seek revenge, but we, we confront injustice. We confront our enemies with love, compassion, caring, kindness trying to bring about change, not only in our enemies, but in the world. So we'll find out these next four weeks as we prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus, what is God's dream for the world today, and how can we be a part of that dream? Amen.